Okay, now we're going to look at practice B. And we're going to work number two again. So it says an 82 kilogram man drops from rest on a diving board. So our given the mass of the man is equal to 82 kilograms and he drops from rest. Well, that means that my initial velocity is zero. On a diving board three meters above the surface of the water. So I'm at the point, I don't even know where this problem's going. So maybe I want to draw myself a little picture. Okay? So here's the guy going down. The initial velocity here is zero. And they just told me that this height here is three meters. So I'm not sure what variable this is. Since I'm going in the y direction, maybe I should just call this y is equal to negative three meters. Why is it negative? Because I'm measuring from here down. And remember, we're using our standard Cartesian sign convention, and our frame of reference is going to be right here where motion begins. Remember, we're dealing with vector quantities. So an 82 kilogram man drops from rest on a diving board three meters above the surface of the water and comes to rest after 50.55 seconds. So I, now I know that the time is equal to 0.55 seconds. What is the net force on the diver as he's brought to rest? Because he comes to rest 0.55 seconds after reaching the water. So this problem has different components in it. So I'm not really sure where to start. If you're not sure where to start, you go to the end. So I want to find F. Well, I know I'm doing impulse momentum because when we do our practice problems, it says here, practice B, force and impulse. So I know, I'm gonna, I know what equation I'm going to use because all the problems use the same equation. See, the equation that we use is F delta T is equal to M delta V. So I know this is what I'm going to use. Now, I don't even know where to start because I don't know what do I have. What do, so I know I want to find F. So let me go ahead and rearrange the equation and say F is equal to M delta V over delta T. Now, what I can do is I can expand this out. So M, I know delta V is VF minus VI over delta T. All right, now I'm going to say, well, what do I know? Okay, well, the thing is that I know VI, I know M, and I know delta T. So I see that the only thing I need to find is VF, and then I can solve this problem, right? So I'm going to say, hmm, I want to find VF, right? I know, what else do I know? Well, I know VI. I know Y. Oh, no, are these those same prop equations from Chapter 2 again? Yep. Okay. So now, if something is moving through the air vertically, is there something else that I know that's not in the problem? What happens when something moves through the air? I have my acceleration due to gravity. Do I have four things now? Remember in these equations, if there's four things, if I have three, I can find the fourth, right? So now I can find VF. So now I'm going to say to myself, well, with e which equation has these four variables? And that's the one that says VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2GY. So now I'm going to rearrange that equation and say that VF is equal to the square root of VI squared plus 2GY. So now I'm going to substitute in my values. 
That's zero, so I'll just get rid of that. So 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 3. So VF comes out to be 7.7 .7 meters per second. So now, once I do this, I go back up here and I write that F is equal to M VF minus VI over delta T. So it's 82 kilograms times 7.7 .7 meters per second minus zero over the change in time, which is 0 0.55 seconds. So now I multiply this out, and remember I have a kilogram meter per second, the numerator, divided by a second. So when I do this on my calculator, I have 82 times 7.7 .7 divided by 0.55. So on the calculator, then the F comes out to be 1148, and then I have a kilogram meter per second divided by a second. So for two significant figures, this would be 1.2 times 10 to the 3, and then a kilogram meter per second divided by a second is a kilogram meter per second squared, which is also called a Newton. And that's my fourth. Now, this problem actually is very confusing in the wording because it says starts from rest, comes to rest. And this is one of the reasons I worked this one because the wording is actually not clear on this. Okay? But what I wanted to show you the whole point was that every problem is not necessarily, remember, just plugging numbers into equations. We see that even though we know we're going to use the impulse momentum theorem, Ft is equal to m delta v, we didn't have all the velocity, so we have to find other ways to find what we need in order to solve the problem. Okay?